dungeon dwelling, cave hunting, other things I can't think of. <laughs> other words I could probably use for that. Uh, we have found the Roxy. The Roxy has been saved temporarily, but likely for, you know, all of time now. <laughs> she has been saved. The reunion has occurred. The multiple of reunions occurred. Uh, and hopefully she explains a little bit about her, you know, where she's been, how she's kind of been up to. I know there's other matters right now that we should be focusing on rather than having the most emotional and touching reunion that we can. But it would still be nice to hear some stuff from her own perspective as it feels like it's been, you know, for ever since what episode like two. So <laughs> we, we could probably use it, you know, I just I'm just saying I think we could use it uh, and we will continue to go and, and dive further and further in as we go. And we look for Zenith, uh, an unknown amount of layers. I think they said they estimate or guess probably around like six ish. Right. And we're probably on like the second or third when we end up finding Roxy, I think about the third. So we still get to go further and. And it's further than they've ever been and also we don't know if she's actually in here or just assuming but as viewers i think we can pretty much assume that she is in here uh and then what happens from there is the biggest mystery and the things that we have to kind of wonder so i'm excited to see what more we get into who we have to go against what we're able to pull out and and do here i don't know exciting hopefully you guys enjoy if you like it all hit the like and subscribe they do mean a lot to me feel free to stick around for the discussion leave any comments about this episode or this series Let's get going with episode 21 of season two of Mashoka Tensei. Okay, so considering she's alone here, I'm assuming this is her journey of being alone. Which is all a man asked for. One of you actually left a comment, I think it explained it, but I literally can't remember. <laughs> I gotta be honest, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Back to the start. Nando could he guys to the Roka? Men of mine on my hose in the Tadoritska Sakiwa, it's much ago money. Say, should take any cocony modo take the shima, but I see a kyoshin in Aritai. So still toes and to cars on me tiny. Hitonami no shia was a cunch demi tie. And in order to do that, we gotta get out of here. Nitakunai. All the memories flash before of how he ended up here. I think that's a good insertion of it. They're going to bait us twice and put an OP here. Fucking pussies. Do it. I bet you won't, bitch. I bet you won't. Oh, they won't. Oh, shit. <laughs> I could have sworn they are going to. Ah, the aroma. Or, sumimasen, just a kusai no de. Kusai desu ka? Unless she recognizes your brother. Kusai desu yo. Arigatou gozaimasu. Tozen no koto o shita made desu. It's not necessarily true. Hajime mashite, watashi no namae wa Rokishi Miguru dia to. I mean, to be fair, you were like four, brother, so don't get too destroyed. Did everything for this. Also, when can I watch this OP? Can I watch it yet? Or should I just wait? I was going to watch it on the last episode. We're pretty close. Can I watch it yet? Let me know. Do we have a chance to explain it? あまり変わっていなかった。ただかなり衰弱していたため、一度町に帰ることにした。じゃ、レッドレストアンドエクスプレイナー。ごめんは高かけしません。いいんじゃよ、ロキシー。たまにはわしもお前を助けに来よう。
I love that connection. I don't even make that. I love that. I know he's just checking on her, but I wanted to, I wanted to say, ah, oh, bro's back to creeping. <laughs> but, uh, he, he, he's, he's good. He's good. Reformed slightly, kind of. <laughs> That's awesome. Why are you acting so unfamiliar, huh? Right, come on. He wants it that way. That's true. He makes that reference towards everybody. It's got to be a crazy perspective difference too, like him looking down on her and everything that too. I'm happy we brought her back and regrouped to do this, as opposed to just jumping. There's going to be a reason we want that. Really? Hmm. Press just waiting for a chance. <laughs> or is it guarding her? <laughs> I love how similar he re he acts to how Xanaba acts towards him. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, buddy, settle down. Alright, back to it. So we work in as a team. <laughs> Gladly. ゼニスさんを助け出して余裕ができたら、二人で迷宮に潜りませんか？二人でですか？うん。はい。本来迷宮探索は面白いものです。もっと簡単な迷宮に二人で潜ってみませんか？いいですね。<笑> Her intentions scream not pure. <laughs> right, I gotta get I gotta get home to my kids. <laughs> I couldn't tell also if he said that it can wait towards his kids, him getting back to them, or if he meant like them conquering it, or him even just thinking about what to do. Damn. They look so goofy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Well done, team. Huh? You're showing off a little too much. <laughs> He's getting the praise. He's getting what he wants. He's getting what he wants. The problem is we don't know anything about her and we don't want to rush or risk it. Alright, Roxy, settle down. <laughs> right. 
I get the concerns, but I actually really love the pacing of it. <laughs> if you like to pick up the sword. Oh my god! Oh, sick. Yep. <laughs> yep. You might have even seen the people that I was traveling with. <laughs> パオロさんたちにはとても <laughs> But that's a great thing, too. You realized your limits and then you decided to figure out a way to get back to the drawing board and start over. That's why we're here. She at the bottom. <laughs> we going all the fucking way down. Okay, I was wondering what it was. Alright, now things look like they're getting serious. This is where the Somewhere random within here? On our floor? Below? <laughs> no, no, my wife's someone else. <laughs> yeah, you might want to tell her about the other. <laughs> Is there any way we can figure this out? Uh, it's got to be something, right? No way it's entirely up to just chance and a feeling, right? I mean, maybe it is. <laughs> Take this serious. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got others for that, brother. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't let her watch. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yep. This is like the ninth flag, brother. Bro's literally making a comparison to his swords to the women that he's allowed to get. <laughs> Insane. I have a feeling he's gonna have three swords by <laughs> by some point. <laughs> have you? I don't remember those. Is it the same as that? I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> he just steps on one and he falls. <laughs> The stair appears. Nice. Good shit, boys. Damn, that's a big asshole. I love the music for this. <laughs> she wants to participate. <laughs> oh. This episode is very fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It's 
kind of, I think, what I've been wanting. Uh, and we've talked a lot about me being a little critical, I guess, over the past couple episodes with certain things. And while I really did like the last episode for certain things that are presented, had criticisms and things that I, I didn't enjoy about it either. In this episode, I don't think I feel that in the slightest. All the moments here just kind of feel as ways to build up chemistry, build up ways of you understanding the dynamics and stuff between the different members of the party, what they're each kind of capable of, what they're each kind of after, what how they want the others in a way to almost view them uh, as we're kind of exploring this a little bit further. Uh, they do a good job at kind of pacing out the differences like of how long they're taking and like coming back and forth uh, while constantly fully exploring this to the fullest. Uh, and then at the end, we get the big reveal and you can instantly feel the moment that we walk into the room. Things are starting to get a lot more serious. We know we're entering the unknown soon and things are getting to that. That's that's where I've been for a little bit where it's like almost no concern going from us leaving school to, OK, whatever's going to start probably next episode, because it's all almost written in stone already of what we're going to be getting to, right? Like it, it just it almost is like everything that's in between is just necessary for the characters one to kind of experience and two, the viewer to, you know, experience everything that comes between it, but also it just doesn't do a good job at building up any sort of tension or anything uh, in the process. And I think this episode does a really good job at balancing literally anything that it needs to, because there's no dramatic moments. There's no tension or anything that they're really trying to build. Uh, nothing that's really trying to scare off or do any of this because this part alone is supposed to be the easy part not saying that it's easy right for these people as they do have to work hard and as we've seen through their own dialogue and everything that they say but we have the knowledge up to this part basically of the labyrinth of what exactly we're getting ourselves into right we know each level we know things about the teleporter we know who we're going against and the things that we're going to be coming up against we can understand that the power level is likely going to get harder as we kind of go down and we're slowly pacing ourselves and getting ourselves in a position that allows us to fully grasp and understand that now we can build us up to a point where the unknown comes in for the characters it's completely unknown for us we have to be concerned because what's going to happen now because we know that we're going to have to get to a point where we face likely zenith actually being down there and us having to come almost face to face with that before whatever boss or thing that we're going to probably have to encounter uh in this scenario ends up arriving which would make plenty of sense to me and it works extremely well and we don't have to build it up or do anything overly like extra uh, in the process and it's just a great job at building our characters together and i thought it was really excellently done we have some funny moments that occur between the characters we have some good bonding and in, in building up moments between them exploring the town us getting to see rudy and roxy slowly come back together little conversations between rudy and paul we get to see little chemistry moments in in fun dynamic things that actually happen between somebody like um alina lisa and paul right and we get to learn a little bit about this you can start feeling that of what happened before when they used to be together uh and when they used to adventure and everything right like you start understanding these things so much more that i don't necessarily think that the previous episodes did the greatest job at kind of depicting or making me feel in any sort of way uh that i think all comes together and wraps itself up extremely nice before we move forward and i think that's awesome uh so big 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 old thumbs up from from the boy on this one. i do not have anything in particular that's coming to mind that I really want to talk about uh, certain scenes, I guess, but nothing huge. So we're just going to kind of go through the episode here. I'd like to get in a little bit of Rocky, Roxy's perspective to start us off here. Uh, it wasn't anything too crazy, but I do think was a little bit necessary uh, before we end up getting this moment. So I'm not too angry in the slightest uh, with that being included. I like the little moment here. Of course, she doesn't recognize him. Uh, she's very self-conscious about a lot of things here, especially her smell. But of course, she doesn't recognize him. It's been fucking how long? I mean, brother was what? Four, five, six, something like that last time she saw him? He's what? 16, 17 now? Like it's, it, it makes sense. It get changed. You know, he now to be fair, he doesn't look different. <laughs> he, he looks very similar to how he did them. You could put a picture next to each other. I'd be like, yeah, that's the same guy. But it's also been so long that it might not be a face or anything that she immediately recognizes or anything. I get it. It all comes into play. Uh, and I, I'm completely behind that. So, of course, he takes this really hard, as he probably should. This is somebody that he's worshipped and looked up to and still has, you know, peace of her with him every single day that he looks up to and he praises and everything. So. 
of course that person not being able to even accept or recognize you at that exact moment is going to fucking kill you. It makes plenty of sense. Nice that he explained it a little bit to her. Uh, she's still extremely worried about that, and he's a bit annoyed that, you know, of course he got got forgotten. I like the way that he compares it to his uh, situation with Sophie. I really do, you know, about the way it made her feel when she wasn't recognized at all by him, and he couldn't actually see that, and it took him fucking how long to be able to, uh, even though she didn't want to clear up the misunderstanding or anything, but how long that ended up taking. So him having to kind of understand and, and be in that, be in those shoes, I think is a really excellent way at kind of uh, depicting this. Checking in on Roxy, we talk a little bit. This part I don't get completely if, if somebody wants to explain it a little bit. Um, the part where they talk about like we need to get them back in and it, before because it'll kind of like reject her if she doesn't get in. And he's like that's and Rudy's comparison was like that it's a traumatic thing or something. But I mean, the more straightforward way to take it is like, for whatever reason, you just can't accept or enter or something. Or is it more of a, the further away you are, the more time apart it is, you're not going to like mentally be able to build yourself back up to go in. And you're just going to kind of have to like face it and go in because if you are been so far apart from it and it's been so long, you're going to constantly be thinking about those negative things. And especially the last scenario that she found herself in, which isn't the most pleasant of moments, uh, will be constantly thinking back on that. Is that more so what she's getting at? Or they're all kind of getting it. So they're like, we got to get her back in so she doesn't just like grow um, nervous and afraid and doesn't want to actually go in or feel like she's incapable of being able to build herself back up and get to that point. Because that would work under like trauma being the word that we use for it or traumatic. But I, I don't know entirely. He might have been meaning it a different way, maybe. I can't really think of anything. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, we get the teleporter book. Also in the process, they had a weird way of like, she was just kind of being a little bit too formal with him and he doesn't want that at all. And he's like, no, <laughs> very familiar. I like him pacing back and forth here, just wanting to like spend time with her, wanting to help her, wanting to talk to her, wanting to be of use to her, just wanting to be around her uh, in general, which it's like, you can look at it as like weird and everything, um, depending on like the person and their their situation together right like of course if she doesn't if she doesn't welcome him in the slightest if she doesn't want him around uh at all yeah you gotta kind of be aware enough you gotta read the room a little bit uh or she could just be straightforward and tell him that and then he would end up having to to go on his way now also if she did tell him something like that and he was still doing this that becomes a big problem that's just how it is kind of with people in general if they don't want you around don't kind of stick around and be creepy uh on this end though it's more kind of endearing i would I'd say of like him just really being like excited and happy that he's around her and wanting to be around her also you can look at it as a way of like he's kind of just keeping his eye on and nothing happens to her and he doesn't lose sight of her again uh but she kind of welcomes that a little bit and he gets so excited about being able to teach her and show her these things and i'm believing we're trying to build up more so uh, in a lot of these moments where where she starts like blushing a lot, where he starts looking at her um, and he like catches her kind of off guard and she doesn't really know what to say and she's acting all shy, uh, as more of like she's starting to see him as this kind of grown up version, trying to see how much he's kind of matured since then, seeing how almost, I guess, incredible you can kind of view him as. I mean, she already viewed him as that as a fucking kid with like how much he was able to kind of grasp onto uh, and how quick he was able to, to really develop, especially for his age. So now being able to look at him as somebody like this somebody that she no longer has to look down on no, somebody else that she almost no longer looks at as a child and can kind of look up to him it allows her to maybe open herself up a little bit more and she starts gaining a lot of these feelings inside uh and she doesn't really know how to process any of that as i mean based on the little that we've seen before she doesn't really handle that stuff too great to begin with uh fun little moments i think all of these do a really good job at just like i said building up a little bit between the characters uh letting alina lisa and paul and everybody kind of work together uh roxy has a request where she wants to go into and tackle the labyrinth i don't get this entirely either is it more to do with she just wants to do something that would be a little bit tame but give them like kind of direction and it's something that they can kind of just be together with that she really wants and she's trying to like create a space for that to be the case or is it that she has like these weird you know fantasies and things and she thinks if they go down there and they do that together you know something magical will happen in her eyes i don't know exactly which one but i'm assuming it's something along those lines uh he starts reflecting and having the concern of like uh yeah i just agreed to do this but wait i'm having a kid and i got a wife and i gotta get back after we do this and what's gonna happen and what do i do and then just the way that he like handles it or responds to it too he's like ah it's whatever i can wait i i don't know if you meant like it can wait in the the sense of 
my answer and like figuring out how I'm going to do it. Or it can wait as in me and Roxy, like going and doing this can wait, or as in I can wait and go see my fucking kids after I hope that's or my kid. I hope that's not the case. Uh, I hope he at least doesn't mean it that way. Uh, but, or maybe more so I'll think about it or we'll talk it out later. I'm kind of hoping that that's the direction that he's taking it. Uh, Paul being a little bit more serious here is fun and him wanting to just show off. Like I said, the chemistry between these two, it works excellent. Excellent. I think it's great bringing all everybody in the dynamics between them. Uh, we also get a moment later. I don't think it's exactly here, uh, but we get to see Rudy get to be kind of shut down a little bit and become be told to be like a support in some sort of way to Roxy, which works really well. It's this person who seems to have all this knowledge, especially looking at this book, especially understanding this place so much more and being likely stronger and more powerful than everybody else that he's kind of accompanied with still being able to be knocked down a, a, another level because he's still inexperienced when it comes to a lot of these things which i think is pretty awesome i love paul being like dude i got weaker what are you talking about <laughs> but just really like trying to show off and, and fishing for the compliments and everything that he wants from his son and it makes him so happy to be praised like that and looked up to like that which i really think is sweet and i i really like that fun shopping moment where we get to go get them out we grab something of course that'll be useful later uh which i think is a good job at just developing these two and the chemistry and stuff between them a little bit more uh talking a little bit about the past and where we've kind of been since then where we were beforehand and it's nice to learn a lot from roxy about her own feelings towards her own inabilities at a certain time feeling like she kind of hit a wall feeling like she could no longer progress and she had these limits of what she was actually capable of and meeting somebody like him and being kind of accompanied and put in this place where these people did so much for her uh especially in like a really dark time allowed her to really open herself up really get back to the basics and kind of find what it was that made you really love this so much that made you really want to develop and get stronger and better at this stuff and really develop in in her own craft so much more uh to become a a lot stronger and a lot more capable which i think is fucking awesome and also just learning so much more uh about like how impactful these people kind of are so why she's in the position that she is where she's actually going out of her way to save somebody like zenith right why she's trying to help paul and she's been kind of partying and working with all these people for so long because of what they really do mean to her and how even in such a short span of time depending on where you are especially mentally at any moment that person could really impact you so much that being a really common thing especially like in life and having those people who the common phrase of like you i've uh you've done so much more for me than like you could ever imagine or that you'll ever know or something right and that's a thing that a lot of people kind of latch on to where they have somebody in their life where maybe they're not even too close to them or something where they were just really influential or just really impactful at a given moment in their life uh because they really needed somebody at that time uh because they were just a big part of their own life and it took up a big span of time or really did things to really progress or allow that person to mature or allow that person to change or see the world in a, a certain different light and because of that you're always extremely thankful for that person whether they actually acknowledge and understand what they actually did for you or not uh and you'll actually always just kind of have that gratefulness for that person which i think is is wonderful and I I think that's also just how she's kind of viewing it in this uh scenario of having those people who feel like she kind of uh was given another chance almost uh by this own encounter that she ran into and how important that kind of arc of her life really became uh and i i really do like that immediately cut right back in and we're like all right we got some some shit to figure out here the thing is like all the enemies and stuff that we come up to up to this point none of them feel threatening or anything which is something that i've talked about where it's like if you're going to have these things, it's what I don't necessarily love about us constantly adventuring and doing things, especially when you have an end goal kind of in sight of what you're doing. If we were in a scenario season one, say, where everybody's just traveling and we have to get back home, doesn't mean we're going to get back home. It doesn't mean any of that's going to happen. But when you're already in the fucking labyrinth you're gonna probably get to zenith before things happen like it's just a it's not like a you can you can come back and counter at me i guess with that statement of making it out to be like that doesn't mean that's gonna happen they could get teleported any of this could happen absolutely sure but if we're gonna think logically and we're gonna think narratively and we've built something up to be so much and like get us to this point it doesn't make 
too much sense to get there without like the big climax stuff actually happening. So these little like enemies and things that we're kind of encountering along the way almost feel like they pose absolutely no threat. Also coming from the knowledge of us being pretty aware of the layer and the layout of all the stuff before we get to the unknown and stuff. And when you apply all that into to one, it kind of just rings. None of that is really that important until we get a little bit further down. So it, it just leaves me to like, yeah, that stuff doesn't do a good job at really building up like an intensity or anything until we get to it it's more of point a to b so we can actually get here uh which i think works so rudy not or mentioning nanahoshi slightly that's not your girlfriend you know she gets all excited but you didn't tell her that you got a wife you didn't tell her you got kids uh it might be a little you know maybe we should say something like that you know maybe we shouldn't just leave her in the dark and kind of get our hopes and feelings and stuff up a little bit not that it's gonna fucking matter if we're being honest but yeah uh rudy having to investigate and wanting to look at things a little bit i love to talk with paul here i love him using the the analogy of his swords and everything too you know certain ones have different roles now i can't imagine myself being without multiple at once they've done so much like for you know being so important and so you know different roles that they each kind of play and they kind of complement each other <laughs> in some sort of way <laughs> it's great i actually like that a lot and i think i think it's wonderful uh, just to, you know, let them know, keep that in mind. But we do do what I've been explaining for fucking three episodes now. That just seems to be the most likely scenario that I'm feeling, which is we're setting up even more Paul death flags. Oh, I'll tell you when you get back, buddy. That's like fucking five things that Paul set up that we got to get back and do. Uh, I just, <laughs> I just don't know about that. There's, there's something about like, but at the same time, maybe we are hitting a limit where he set himself up for so many that they cancel out and there's no way that something happens to him. Right. Because like, there, there's so many, there is so, so many, uh, he recalls that the room looks exactly like what he saw before. I don't see it. I, I don't fucking know what he was looking. I gotta be honest, besides the stone and they're different stones. I don't know how the fuck he looked at this and was like, yeah, that's, that's, I don't know, whatever. He saw it though. I, I did not. It does not look like it to me. But anyways, he, he was smart enough to realize we did go underground before. So let's, let's try it again. Uh, and it ended up working. I loved everybody coming up and being like, let's fucking go, you know, big old team bonding moment, big old morale boost for the team and for himself too. And letting him know he's kind of accepted upon the squad here. Roxy coming in is really cute as he gets caught. <laughs> she, he catches her and he turns around uh, until we come in and the unknown begins here. This is where shit probably gets a little bit scary and I'm excited to see where that heads. As I said before, big old thumbs up from the boy. Very, very happy and pleased with the way that that kind of went about. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed quite a bit as well. I am excited to get into the final, what do we have? Three episodes still, I think, of this arc, uh, which will be fucking nerve-wracking for sure, but I'm excited. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you liked it all, the like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot to me. Feel free to check out the videos and channel. If you comment to this episode or series, I'll be back for episode 22 next week. I hope it was a great one. Peace.